At the Chesapeake Bay Environmental Center, or as we refer to it as CBEC, uh, we're very committed to environmental education and habitat restoration. And the living shoreline basically is made to look like all the other marsh that's surrounding you. How we get that mission out is through stewardship and sustainability. And as you see today, we have our volunteers here uh, working on the living shoreline, removing the rack line, and hopefully you know, cleaning it up, making it a little bit better so other people can enjoy it, so the wildlife can enjoy it. A living shoreline can really refer to an existing shoreline that may have trees falling over, it may just have marsh, it may have a beach. This project here at, at Chesapeake Bay Environmental Center was conceived to improve and to enhance terrapin nesting. And so the uh, original idea was to remove the hardened structure, the concrete bulkhead that existed along the shoreline here, and to uh, provide for nesting beach habitat. And then in front of that, there was an oyster reef that was established uh, at the same time, built from rubble from Memorial Stadium when Memorial Stadium was, uh, was demolished. The living shorelines are important. One, they're important for the wildlife that's here. When you take away that riprap bulkhead, you're providing habitat for them. So we have oyster habitat, we have habitat that uses the shallows. Things like the juvenile crabs and terrapins, they can hide in there, they can feed in there. We were just cleaning up the shoreline now in the rack line. We have a little diamondback terrapin and uh, they like hanging out in there. This is one of the early hatching. It's pretty early in the season. And um, this is why we do this type of thing, you know, for these guys. If it wouldn't be for the volunteers, we wouldn't get anything done around here. We're a staff of three. And right now we have 130 volunteers. And you can see some of them here from school groups to retired professionals. Well, we've been volunteering here for a few months. Uh, we've been volunteering actually in national parks and national wildlife refuges for four years. My wife and I have been doing that. The only way we can protect the Chesapeake Bay is by doing things like this, uh, keeping the shorelines clear so that the oysters and the uh, other wildlife can grow. Um, and if nobody does this, it'll, it'll just end. This is the town of Howland Beach. As you can see, we are on the shoreline of the Chesapeake Bay. And this is our living shoreline. And the genesis of this living shoreline was actually Hurricane Isabel. And although a number of communities around us lost sand uh, in the hurricane, the town of Howland Beach actually gained sand. So what we decided to do was God gave us the sand, we decided to keep it. And the way to keep it was to establish a living shoreline and to protect us not only from another hurricane, but also to demonstrate to visitors in the community what happens when you can actually retain the sand and how do you do it and how do you protect it. So what we did was enlisted a series of volunteers. So the volunteers came in, helped us to regrade, put in the uh, uh, biologs, and plant these native species biograss. And what the biograss do is they form a stabilization force, this nature's way of maintaining the sand that we have here. What we love about the project is once it's in and it's stabilized, is virtually maintenance free. The only thing we need for volunteers to help us do is pick up trash along the shoreline, things wash up from the beach, that sort of thing. But other than that, maintenance free, we're mimicking what nature does. Restoration projects need volunteers. It's a critical role. We can't, again, as staff, being a short amount of staff, you need those people to help put things in place. Sometimes projects, again, like a living shoreline project, you have hundreds of linear feet of shoreline that you have to plant. If one person had to do that and that was just their job all day, it would take forever to restore something. So the volunteers are crucial in getting this stuff done. Volunteers, they take ownership of the project, they feel good about it, they can relay that to the community, and that's how we get the word out. All right. All right. Let's get to it.